Okay, so we are going to start over because I believe we were muted and not everyone may have caught um, the, the things we were discussing. So if you'll give us just a second, we're gonna back up our presentation. Let's re record. Welcome everyone to eEmployer Solutions webinar series. Today's session is new hire benefit enrollment. This webinar series is a new initiative that ESI is providing free of charge to our clients. Our goals are to provide educational material on HR related topics such as payroll, risk, compliance, and benefits, to help you avoid pitfalls, to explain ESI's processes so you can streamline your daily tasks, and then to answer any questions you may have. My name is Cheryl Zhang, and I will be your moderator today. I'm an HR business partner with ESI. Today's presentation is scheduled for about half an hour. That's going to include some additional time at the end for questions. We're also going to be recording this session. We'll publish it later on our YouTube channel and also send you a copy as well as some of the slides from today's presentation. So for housekeeping, as you can see, we're going to Make sure everybody's muted during the presentation, but you can submit questions through the chat mechanism on the GoToMeeting, and then we'll answer any of those after the session. Our presenter today is Erica Antu. Erica is a benefits enrollment coordinator. She's been with ESI since the spring of 2010. She was originally part of the payroll department and spent six years there before transitioning over to the benefits department last year. Erica has 15 plus years in the PEO industry and her broad experience includes payroll, benefits, customer service, time and labor management, as well as client and employee training. So at this time, I'll turn it over to Erica. Good afternoon, everyone. So today's webinar is going to cover the online benefits enrollment system, as well as system notifications, completing benefits enrollment, adding covered dependents, information you'll need to complete the webinar, and then we'll follow up at the end with questions. Now this process that we're covering today is similar to the open enrollment, but it has to do with managers that are using our online ESI portal to submit new hires as opposed to doing paper. So if you're not currently utilizing online, um, this will give you an opportunity to see that. If you'd like to make the switch of uh, going paperless, you can always contact ESI, um, either your HR business partner, and we can set up time to discuss that with you. Now, for the purposes of our portal, I'm sorry, our webinar today, I'm going to switch over to our ESI portal. Most of you, may be familiar with um, logging in. So what I've already done for this webinar is, as a manager gone in and created my employee, I also registered that employee. So now I'm gonna show you the steps that the employee would go through to complete their benefits enrollment. I've gone out to the ESI website, did the e-login. I'm going to log in as an employee they will have created their username. They should have received a password as well when they registered. And now they'll see the login screen. To launch the onboarding, they're going to click on the Launch Me, and it's going to open up the window that will allow them to do their new hire paperwork as well as complete the benefits portion of their enrollment. As far as timing for the new hire documents, they do have five days to complete those. And for benefits, we do give the employee additional time so that they can review the paperwork, um, consider it with their spouse, what level of coverage and what plans they would like to elect. 
So this is our welcome screen that the employee will see. All they have to do is click on the get started and it will take them through the workflow. So here on the left hand side, you're going to see all of the menu items that an employee has to complete in order to submit their enrollment. Now, as they complete each, each section, a check mark will appear on the left hand side next to the menu, letting them know that they have finished that section. I'm going to skip down here to where it says open enrollment. And as you can see, it's opened up a sub menu. They have the option of then starting with their health benefits. It'll also allow them to elect voluntary benefits, flexible spending items, as well as additional benefit items. Now, for a company, when you're using ESI for your benefits, these menus may change. Not everyone offers the same benefits. So we do customize the enrollment that the employee is going to see so that it's specific to each of our customers. So we're going to start with medical. It's going to show you here information as well as all of the plans, the pricing on a per pay period level that the employee would pay. You have additional items here where it says, for example, I'm going to click on this SBC, which is a summary of benefits coverage. This is going to give the information for that particular plan to the employee on the coverage items for that particular benefit plan, as well as links that will take them directly to the provider website. This one is of course a Humana, so it is linked to take them out to the Humana website. So from here, the employee would select which plan they'd like to enroll in. They will then select the level of coverage they want, and then they will select continue. So each item that you see here has to be completed. Whether or not the employee is going to choose to elect, they do have to select whether they want to enroll or decline coverage. If the employee is declining coverage, we ask that they state um, why they are declining coverage. So for example, if they have coverage through their spouse, that's all they have to pick is covered under spouse. And then they would say, continue. And as you can see now, the medical has been checked off. Now they will go through each one of these items until at the very end, they're going to see a review and submit. Now, if an employee for whatever reason doesn't have time to finish it, they can always log back in and complete it. You see here, it's telling them the number of days that they do have to complete the enrollment, the progress here, I have completed the medical, but each of the items that still need to be completed, you can see here they have select or please complete in order to continue the status of that progress. So now we're going to show you the dependent information. So if an employee wants to include a dependent, let me bring up that window, sorry. This is what it's going to look like. So for example, for the dental, I have chosen employee spouse coverage. And it's going to say here that you need to add a dependent. You simply click on the button to add a dependent or beneficiary. You have to have a dependent date of birth or social security number, well, I'm sorry, not or, and their social security number to be able to enroll them. 
when you click on add the dependent or beneficiary, you're going to get an additional pop up. It's going to show you here in red all of the fields that need to be completed. Then you will save and it will take you back to your original selection where you see the dependent now. You will say, yes, I want to cover this person. And then you will continue. Now, once the employee gets to the point where they are ready to submit their elections, they have gone through all of the fields, they're going to have this screen. It's the review and submit. So now all of those fields that we have gone through say that they have been completed and they have the option to actually submit their enrollment. Once they click on submit my elections, they're going to get a pop-up window that says that they are attesting to the elections that they have made. They are aware that they are responsible for the deductions for those benefits that they are electing, then they will see, congratulations, you are finished. It will show the status of their open enrollment as submitted. Now, although they're completing this enrollment at the time of their hire, we do still put the waiting period in effect. So if your company has a 30 or 60 or 90 day waiting period, it will hold these elections and make them effective for when that employee becomes eligible. One of the most common things we see is employees that think that they have completed everything, but they are still getting notifications from the system telling them to please submit. And usually if we back up, it's because they see here that they have completed everything, but that little red submit my elections hasn't been pressed to quite finish the process. So if you have an employee that comes to you and says, hey, I, I thought I had submitted this already, that is usually one of the first things we want to check. And then of course, once they have finished, we post them because we receive a notification the employee has completed it. They can then go out to their ESI portal and under benefits, benefit summary, they'll be able to see all of the plans that they elected, the coverage, if they have a dependent covered under that plan, the effective date of their coverage, and then the employee contribution, which is their portion of the benefit. And that concludes the um, presentation. Now we want to open it up for anyone that might have questions. Introducing deductible rewards. Now you can earn $100 off your deductible for every year of safe driving up to $500 total. You even get the first $100 off the day you sign up. I'm going Ask to your all state agent when we review that. I'm not sure who, uh, who might have put us on hold, but if you have a question, if you would please just submit that to us via the chat and we can get that answered for you. Someone have a question? Can you print your selections before you submit them? Yes, you can. Um, when you are at the review and submit page, let me back up and show that to you. From here, all the employee has to do is do control P or file and print, and they can get a copy of that. And, it, and what we do also is before an employee is enrolled, we do send out via email benefit confirmation reports that will show the employee everything that they elected. We send those out prior to deductions being started and ask the employee to please review. And if they have any questions, to please reach out to us so that we can make changes before those deductions start happening. So we 
had another question that says, can you change your after tax selections two times during the plan year? So really with um, enrollment, you only have 30 days from your effective date to make any changes. Any changes after those 30 days would have to be because the employee had a qualifying or life event. Otherwise, it would take place at the next open enrollment. So we had a question for the Gold's Gym. Now Gold's Gym is an ancillary product. Um, that is one that we usually will allow enrollment for at any time because it's not under contract, it's a month to month. But the other benefit plans, because of section 125, um, we would have to wait until there's a life event or uh, the open enrollment. The Gold's Gym doesn't fall under that. That's, that's the only benefit that is an exception. Do we have any other questions? So we have the question if that is the same for the vacation and Christmas club. Those are actually handled through the payroll department. It's not done through the benefits department. And yes, you can make changes to the vacation and Christmas club, um, either to start or stop or change your deductions. Now that doesn't apply to withdrawal being an early withdrawal. If an employee makes an early withdrawal from their vacation club, they can re-enroll. However, it will not re-enroll until the start of that program year which for vacation is in May, um, and the Christmas club is in November. Any other questions? Okay, we, I don't see any other questions coming in. Now, at the conclusion of our webinar, we will be following up with everyone that attended. You will receive a survey as well as a copy of the um, PowerPoint presentation for today. We will also publish this recording to our ESI YouTube channel. You'll receive a link for that so that if you need to reference it at the end of the webinar, you will be able to. You can also share it with anyone else in your company if they were not able to attend. Thank you, everyone. Have a good day.